Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, we'll be covering MPLS configuration on a Mikrotik router. Um, before we jump into the actual configuration, I just quickly want to give you a quick rundown of what MPLS is. It is short for multi-protocol label switching. And um, in the industry, you'll hear people call this a layer 2.5 protocol. If you look at the OSI model, uh, reason being it, it works on a switching level. So there you get your layer two stuff, but it's dealing in IP addresses. So that's your layer three, right? So what makes MPLS useful is instead of your router having to look up at its routing table and do all kinds of uh, other funky stuff in the background, it's literally just looking at the switching table that it builds up from the MPLS. And then it learns through which ports and which ports are the best ports to use to get to a destination. So then, IP addresses or IP ranges suddenly becomes switched and not routed, if that makes sense. Um, MPLS also makes use of the, the LDP protocol. So that is what is used to discover MPLS neighbors and to um, form these uh, switching tables, if you will, these MPLS labels. Um, and you literally only need to enable LDP on your Mikrotik routers, and then you can kind of start doing the MPLS. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on the command line on a couple of routers, and then I'll show you how to do it on the Wimbox on let's say two of the routers as well. Uh, if you see on the diagram with the topology, it should look familiar to the OSPF lab that we did because it is the same lab the only difference is I've added another link between ABR1 and ABR2 so that we've got this little mesh going on here. And the a pre-requirement for MPLS as well is you do need an IGP to run it. If you don't have an IGP, it's not going to work because the routes won't be learned throughout the network and then it's just gonna fail. You need an IGP in order to use MPLS. So that's also why I started off with that OSPF video so that we can do this. All right, cool. So let's jump into router one's configuration. So this is router one. So all that we need to do is we can go into the MPLS. We can go into the LDP. Then we can go into set. We need to enable the LDP. So that is the the big thing is you the Mikrotix is disable LDP by default. So when you go into it, you need to enable LDP in order to do that uh, label discovery protocol business. Then we need to set our LSR ID, and that is going to be um, the loopback address of the router that I have. So router one's loopback address was 1.1.1.1, and we also need to set a transport address. So transport address in my case is going to be also 1.1.1.1. And that's it. That is literally it. Um, we also need to set the interface. So this is where we are going to be learning our, where we're looking for other LDP uh, packets and stuff coming in. So let's just say MPLS. LDP interface. So we're going to add an interface and our interfaces are going to be it's going to be all of the Ethernet interfaces that I have going to the other routers. So in my case it's only two ports. It's Ether1 and Ether2. So I can Create ether one to ABR one. And we also can just define the transport address here, which is one dot one dot one dot one. what doesn't fit a value show me please? Let's just see if I got the name incorrect. Probably the double H that got me. There we go. And 
we just do the same for the second interface. So this is going to be Ether2 going to ABR2, same transport address. And that's it. That simple is configured on one of the Mikrotik routers. But you won't see any benefits yet because we haven't configured it on the rest of the network. So let's quickly do that. It's going to be a quick process. And then I'll show you um, how it's learning the switch packets and, and all the labels and such. So it's quite interesting. Okay, so on ABR1, <coughs> admin blank, so same thing. We're going to go into MPLS, we're going to go into the LDP, we're going to set it as enabled. We're going to add a transport address, which is 2.2.2.2. .2 .2. This is a loopback address of this router. And then we need our LSR ID. So it is 2.2.2.2. .2 and that's it. MPLS, interf LDP interface, LDP interface. We're going to add interface. So this is also going to be ether one to R1. And the transport 2.2.2.2. .2 so let's just set this as well for ether two to R3. And then there's a last one for that mesh that we've created from Ether3 to ABR2. We hit enter and we're done on two of the routers. Uh, we can quickly check if we're learning anything yet. MPLS, LDP, um, neighbors, print. Cool, so we've already got a neighborship with router one. It is coming in over OSPF. So it's dynamic over OSPF. And it's telling us what our peer address is. There's a few other things that we can check out as well. Um, LDP neighbor. Okay, I'll, I'll show you that on Wimbox. Um, because I'm not too sure now in the command line where, but you could see things like remote bindings and uh, what labels your routes are getting. But I'll show that to you on Winbox just now. So let's quickly just finish off on this last router, router three. Okay, admin. Okay, so we're going to go into MPLS, LDP, set enabled yes transport this one's transport is 4.4.4.4 with the lsr id being the same and then mpls ldp interface and then we add and that's going to be ether one on router three let's just see what i've called it so it's ether one to abr1 hit enter and then mpls ldp no oh we're done <laughs> i'm like um thinking there's another step for some reason that's how quick it is you see it's it's really not as difficult to set up the mpls on the mikrotik uh people might people always make a big bang about yes mpls um it's going to be hard to set up but it, it's really not don't Overcomplicated. It's literally just about adding those uh, label switching to the packets when they come into the network. So let's quickly finish this off by adding the MPLS on the Winbox. So I'll show you when we log into Winbox. I'm just going to log on to ABR2 there. This is just a management IP that I'm assigned through that switch. Sorry about that. I quickly cut the video just to look at something with my dog. Um, we're back, we're in Winbox. We're about to set up the MPLS on Winbox. So to do this, we just click on MPLS. We go into MPLS again. And from here, we go to LDP settings. And just like on the command line, we set it to enable. We put in our LSR ID. So for this router, it is 3.3.3.3. .3 .3 .3. Transport address 3.3.3.3. .3 .3 .3 .3. 
and we apply that. Only thing left is add the LDP interface or interfaces. In my case, since it's an ABR, and if we look at our topology, there's the three links, so ether one, three, and two. So let's quickly add those three interfaces, ether one, ether two, and ether three. Let's uh, add this on the last router. So this is going to go to dot six. Again, this is just a management IP. So we go into MPLS, MPLS, enable the setting, set the LSR ID. This one is 6.6.6.6. .6 if I remember correctly, I'm sure it is, but let me just confirm. No, it's 5.5.5.5. Am I on the right router? Let me just quickly check, make sure. Yeah, I am. Hmm. Anyways, that's, uh, oh yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine. So, We've applied the settings. Let's just add the interfaces. It's just the one interface. Apply and okay. And wait, I just forgot to set the transport addresses. Let's just fix them. This was three three three. Copy. Okay. So if I now go to let's say router one. I'm going to check it from there. We'll go into our MPLS, which we're already in. So here I can see all my LDP neighbors. So these are neighbors that's directly connected with me. And these are also the addresses that I see from them. If we look at our forwarding table, the forwarding table is quite important. So these are labels that are applied to a route and also You'll see there's an in label, so that's kind of the label it's expecting to come in. And the out label is the label it's sending back out towards the other routers. So we here we only have the two out labels, and we've got a bunch of different in labels. We can also see things like the local bindings, as well as the remote bindings. So these are all of the routes that we're learning, if you think about it. And it shows us how we're learning them, which peer to go to to get to them. So it, it this is why it needs the IGP. And this also now allows the router to build a very good switching table to do the MPLS. That is MPLS in a nutshell on a Mikrotik router. You see it's not too difficult. And with this enabled, we can start looking at doing things like layer three VPN, which is basically just VRFs. Um, but you don't need MPLS to do the VRS, but I'll show you that. <coughs> and importantly, you need MPLS to do stuff like VPLS, and that allows you to span a broadcast domain over two locations. So that's also quite useful. So we'll get into that as well. Um, I'm going to end off the video here. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so, and also consider liking the video and sharing it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Bye.